Welcome to WP Coffee Talk. Thank you to all of our sponsors, and especially to our Espresso Level sponsors, Helix Managed WordPress Hosting, for both their sponsorship and for hosting our site, and to Expander Digital for both their sponsorship and providing SEO services to us. Now enjoy the episode. Welcome to the next episode of WP Coffee Talk, where I get to talk to amazing people all over the world in the WordPress community. And sometimes I know people, as I've said before, and sometimes I don't. And tonight is the first time that I've ever actually talking to Chandler. Uh, Chandler Weiner, am I saying it right? Yes, yes, Chandler Perfect. Weiner. Perfect. I usually ask before I go on the air, so I don't have to ask you That's fine. <laughs> on air. <laughs> no worries. I can imagine how else you'd pronounce it, but there you are. And Chandler, <laughs> you and I have never met before. That is correct. We've only chatted through um, Twitter. And yes. the reason you're on my show is because we have a mutual friend who said to both you and me, oh my <laughs> goodness, you have to be on WP Coffee Talk. And oh my goodness, you have to have him on WP Coffee Talk. <laughs> and I know your schedule's busy. And you hadn't, yes. you know, in that 10 minutes since she told me that, um, said <laughs> had actually scheduled something so she's like did he schedule yet did he schedule yet i'm like no but i'll put a bug in his ear and then i, th I think you were like oh my god okay already i'll do it <laughs> no it was you were very kind i uh it i every everyone needs a, a push every every once in a while to finally get some things done so i greatly appreciate it <laughs> it was my pleasure and it's my pleasure to have you here this evening um we're both in, in the east coast so we're both in uh east coast time and it's about almost seven o'clock at night. So I can say yes. this evening it's, and now it's to the point of the year where it's actually dark outside at this point. So at least yes, here. it's dark for you. It's still a little bit lighter here in uh, Florida. We have no snow, even though it's a, it's uh, just the start of Oc October and uh, orange season. Uh, <laughs> it's at least a, a little bit warmer up here and a little bit more, more light well, in central, central Florida. We don't have snow yet, but okay. it's coming. <laughs> As they said on Game of Thrones, winter is coming. Yes, it is. <laughs> it has snowed as early as mid to late October before, but usually it starts to hit us in December. So Okay, well, it shows how much I, I know as a born and raised Florida guy. Yeah, well, you'll have to come to work Camp Rochester some year in October. I would see love what you to. Think. It looks like fun. <laughs> it yeah. was a lot of fun. So tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Well, uh... First of all, thank you for having me on the podcast. Uh, my name is Chandler Weiner. I am a biologist by day. I'm a WordPress designer by, by night and a techie through and through. Um, <laughs> so I am different from a lot of the people that you've had on the podcast and that WordPress is business number two. It's my side, side gig, but it's a side gig that I love and it's one that I'm trying to grow in, into more of a prim, primary job for me. Um, and I have other little random uh, projects that I do. Um, I am very in, involved in Hack, Hacktoberfest, which is um, the DigitalOcean sponsored uh, October open source hacking celebration swag giveaway stuff. Oh, that's um, cool. Yes. And I have a uh, lovely uh, a lovely wife who is a stay-at-home mom to our almost three-year-old son. And I work as hard as I can every day to give them the best life possible. Well, that sounds wonderful. That's awesome. Well, it's so great to meet you. I can't wait to hear more about you as we go through our questions and hear yes. about what you do with, with your WordPress business. But first things first, show me your mugs because you told mugs, me you have uh, two. It so is I want to see what you're drinking out of the left hand and the right hand today. <laughs> so I do have, yeah, I have both, both hands going because this is WP Coffee Talk. I figured we should start with coffee. So uh, <laughs> on, in my uh, left hand, um, I got this wonderful Yellowstone mug from a good friend uh, who became a U.S. citizen by working at Yellowstone National Park. And uh, she is a folk artist. Uh, her name is Amber Eichmann, if you ever want to look up some awesome folk folk music and she gave me this. This is a wonderful treasured mug. This is filled with uh, carib caribou coffee. So just oh. the K-cup kind of stuff, not overly go. too uh, fancy. But and no actual ca no caribou were actually harmed in the making of your no coffee? No actual caribou. No, <laughs> I figured I should stick with the external theme and internal theme. Uh, I like it, I like I'll, it. You know, go with the flow there. Um, yeah. <laughs> now, some people uh, say that they are tea connoisseurs if they're really in, into tea. I prefer the word tea snob. So uh, in, in my right hand is a teacup that my wife made for me back when, when, when we were dating. Uh, there's uh -huh. a little cat on the side and my name here. And there's a little matching uh, oh, saucer. saucer. <laughs> 
Um, and this is filled with uh, a black dragon pearl tea from a, a, a Adagio too. So have you ever oh, yeah. seen like flowering teas that kind of open I have. up? So again, tea snob. Um, half of my pantry at home is full of loose, loose leaf tea, and uh, this black dragon tea is one that I really, really like. So I'll have to try that's, it sometime. That's in my right hand. <laughs> that's wonderful. Fantastic. Well, I have a mug that I have not used on the show yet, I don't think. I just got it recently. So I, there's no special story other than I was shopping, spending a little bit of time at Walmart, of all places, and mm -hmm. um, found these like shaped mugs, right? So I was, I would just use this one on the show before you. I think that's so cute. Uh, my little, <laughs> my little owl. But yeah. it's October. We're moving into um, Halloween and then Day of the Dead. So I have a sugar school mug, which I absolutely adore. That is wonderful. That's very cool. I like that. <laughs> I hope I look like this when I die. Just saying. And yes, I'm drinking, all decorated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drinking water because uh, with word camp this last weekend, I was up, up, going, 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 and I absolutely need some sleep tonight. So um, I do usually fall into the overly caffeinated kind of yes. crowd, but tonight I actually would like to <laughs> get to sleep before midnight. Usually I'm up till two or three in the morning, but tonight I actually <laughs> want to fall asleep. So I've got water in my mug. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's that's me. I am certainly in that overly caffeinated crowd. That's me on a de yeah. default basis. So, uh, yeah, having two mugs side by side is not something that is rare for yeah. me to be having. Usually, when people say they're double fisting drinks, it's yeah. they've got one, two beers going. But no, you're like coffee and yeah. tea. No beer. I get too sleepy. I am also up till one o'clock, two o'clock most most uh, most mornings. So, overly caffeinated yeah. is my default state. I like it. I like it. And that works when you have a small child too. Yes. <laughs> because, because they are awake a lot. <laughs> Very much so. Yes. So tell us, how did you get started with WordPress? So I'm sure my WordPress story is similar to most people's. Um, you know, you start off uh, in Dreamweaver building static sites. I know static sites are all the rage now, not with Dreamweaver. Um, but I basically got started uh, just building a hobby site for myself because I'm a crazy techie and I have loved anything with a circuit board in it since I was born. Uh, just the ability for me to create something out of nothing I thought was phenomenal. So uh, in middle school, I, st I started with Dream Dreamweaver and building uh, sites there and wonderful FTP syncing issues. Um, <laughs> from there, I moved on to everyone's favorite CMS, Joomla. Uh, <laughs> and I only did, did that be because I had a cPanel site and there was a one-click install button and I pushed that and I just figured out what Joomla was and I built a site on it. I built a site for my Boy Scout uh, district and I had to use some sort of CMS because other people were going to be editing this and posting uh, stuff to it and then the day of reckoning happened and I decided to update the site and it broke beyond all comprehension. Oh and, no! <laughs> uh, <laughs> me being, uh, you know, in high school at that time, I wasn't about to diagnose problems with Joomla. So what did I do? I went back to my cPanel in, in, installation, found the next one-click thing that I could do. There's this thing called Word WordPress. I installed it and I never <laughs> looked back because it, it worked. And it, I was, was going to say it wasn't Drupal, was it? You didn't have to go through both <laughs> no. Joomla and Drupal. Okay. Thankfully, okay. no. Uh, <laughs> only only a few major headaches before finally landing onto Word, WordPress. <laughs> um, and I basically never looked back since. Yeah, I love that. That's a great story. And, you know, we all have our different origin stories and yes. they always have some element of, well, I kind of stumbled into WordPress. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of happened that, that, that way. Yeah. After I was bashing my head into a, a wall and I got PHP errors out the wazoo for a Joomla site <laughs> and I was in high school and didn't know how, how to fix it. So I was like, all right, there we're going to scrap go. it and do it all over again. I'll tell you, so I started with Dreamweaver as well, and uh, and the FTP issue and updating everything with the FTP and making sure that all the pages had the same menu at the top, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah, that was, those are fun days. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> because my experience was all FTP, the first time I built a WordPress website, I built it on a sub subdomain. Sure. And then I wanted to move it to her hosting. So what did I do? I tried to FTP it. Guess what doesn't work with WordPress? Uh, FTP in your site, but I didn't know what yeah. to do. I didn't understand yeah, migration. It was like the first site I ever built. So I was like, well, I guess I have to build this whole site from scratch again. And that's what I did because I had a deadline. And so I built the same site twice in one night. There you go. Wow. 
that's a big headache. Um, but but now you learned yeah. all about WordPress and how to migrate things properly. So you know, silver it, silver lining there. He headaches uh, like that are the stuff that education is built on. Absolutely, yes, definitely. <laughs> self education, I should say for sure, for sure. Um, what's something that you think that other people not. I shouldn't say other people's websites, websites in general. When we look at websites mm -hmm. today and we kind of look across the board, what's something that you think that we should focus more attention on, um, whether it's um, for the end user or for ourselves to make sure that we have a better, more secure website? So site design is always something that people tend to think about first when they're building a, a site is I want for it to look great. I want for it to have my business's you know, logos and colors, I want for it to be just like this. But what they tend to off, often miss is why are people going to your site and what is val what values that is your site going to actually bring to, to them? And that value comes in the form of content. Mm -hmm. So content is king, but it seems like when people, uh, especially people that are not these, these design sites previously, they can get all focused on the intricate details of how things look and then things gonna stick in their head of like this button is just the wrong shade of turquoise. Who cares? <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> people are coming to, to, to your site because they, they want to know more about your specific business and what you can offer them more so than just what Twitter or Facebook or other business presences that, that you have. So content is king. Um, and on top of that, you also don't wanna have something or a, a site where it basically looks like uh, word salad i call it wordpress salad <laughs> or, sorry word word salad press uh -huh. word salad press where all you all you have is just content and then no way to organize it either but mm -hmm. um if you keep your content streamlined if you think about why someone is visiting your site compared mm -hmm. to you know going to see you on a twitter or facebook or you youtube make sure that your content is tailored to them uh, and then they can forgive some slight you know visual um, mm -hmm. things that aren't exactly right uh, as long as they are getting something out of of it and no word salad press either <laughs> it's so funny that you say that because I just recorded another episode about an hour ago with Brent okay. Kobayashi Brent's in um, <laughs> Toronto and he okay. had very, something very similar about talking about content. And we had a little conversation about the fact that if you think about what one of the most visited sites in the world and the most recognizable sites in the world, it's amazon.com. Yes. Amazon is not a pretty mm -hmm. website. Not at all. <laughs> Amazon has a lot of information on it. However, you know how to use it as soon as you land on it. Mm -hmm because Definitely. they did the research to make sure that all of those things you just mentioned were in place. So that's very interesting. Yes, and, and, and even though they have boatloads of, of things, they don't show it to you all at once. There is not a grid of a hundred products you have to scroll through, it's curated. Right. Yes. And yes, there are you know, big buttons and stuff to, to, to click to, but they, they are good at figuring out why you're there. And they know why you're there because you bought stuff before. If you bought stuff before, mm -hmm. here's what you're, you'll buy now. Right, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, they're brilliant. Whoever's building all that, it's brilliant, for sure. Well beyond um, my pay grade. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> Although <laughs> it would be nice to be in that pay grade. However, <laughs> moving <Yes>. on. <laughs> What's something that you wish you knew about WordPress that you've learned since you started using WordPress that might have made your life a little easier? I wish that I knew that there was a wonderful WordPress community out there mm -hmm. because I didn't know that at, at first. I seriously stumbled into WordPress through one-click installs in cPanel, not real, realizing that there was some wonderful community of like-minded people that have already tried to bash their head against the wall fixing problems that I'm now having. That if, <laughs> if only I knew to reach out to, to, to them, I could have saved myself a lot of headache too. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, as, as uh, we had mentioned when, before we started to re re record, I just attended my first WordCamp in WordCamp or Orlando, I loved it. I wish that I had gone to every WordCamp since, and I, I'm planning to go on every WordCamp I possibly can going uh, going forward. It was oh, wonderful. Uh, I love just it. being able to, yeah, just just being able to uh, meet like-minded people, and to be also able to meet people that I follow on Twitter and like see their real faces and say hi. I love you. I think you're great. Can I shake your hand, please? Um, <laughs> it was a wonderful ex experience, and. Uh, if 
there is any listener out there that doesn't know that WordCamp has phenomenal people behind it that are loving and kind and there to help help you. There's a lot of people in WordPress that are loving and kind and there to help you. Uh, and I wish I'd known that that uh, much much sooner. Absolutely. And I don't know if you're going to talk about this later. Um, because I know that if people don't know, I share the questions in advance, so nothing should come as a surprise to anybody. It gives you an opportunity to prepare. But um, the person that introduced you to WP Coffee Talk and was so insistent that you be on the show was <laughs> Allie Nimmons. And yes. Allie was my first guest on WP Coffee Talk. And I she's saw. come so, so far. So Allie and I didn't know each other. She saw the tweet about it. She signed up to be on the show. She was running her own agency. We had a great conversation. I was a terrible host because I didn't know what I was doing. With my first podcast. I was like talking over her. I didn't like pause to let her talk. I mean, she was so gracious. And uh, since then, she now works with me at Impress.org. We work for Give um, and Impress. Yes, that's that's wonderful. wonderful. And it's just, it's a wonderful world that we're all a part of. And that's because of things like WordCamps. Yeah, and she is someone whose uh, design blog I had actually followed for many years, and I loved her uh, her site. Uh, and I, I I know she doesn't have uh, active clients that she's currently taking on on now, but I followed her blog for many years. Yeah. And then um, when I signed up for the Word WordCamp, I scrolled through the whole public list of who was going where. I was like, wait, I know that name, and I know that name, and I know that name. So I made a list of people that I want to go and you know see, just say hi to, and be the random overly excited extra caffeinated stranger that just comes up and says, hi, I've read you for years. That's exactly what I did. I basically cornered Allie the moment we both showed up. Um, and I said, hi, I've never met, met you. I think you're wonderful. I've read your blog. Like, you know, my name's Chandler. I have give questions. Uh, can, you, can, can you ask me, like, can you help me with, with, with these? And she's like, uh, yes, sure. Hi. And um, she was lovely. And I was very, very happy that she uh, had us connect up so we can talk here today. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, this will probably be on. I have I have about 35 more episodes already recorded to put out. Holy so this will moly. Be on, I know this will be on after um, WordCamp US and Allie and okay. I will both be at WordCamp US this year. And she and I and Taylor uh, Walden, who's also part of the Give Entourage, we're going to get matching tattoos while we're there. So stand by and wait oh, to what? see what those are. Oh, what? oh, or is that a secret? Um, well, okay. I think we're talking about <laughs> doing co coffee related, actually. Oh, so, okay. Because we all like Very coffee. Nice. And, and if we do go that route, I'm going to get my logo. So there you go. I think it's perfect. I like that. Isn't that fun? Yeah, for sure. Yes. It'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, looking at my questions because I get myself off off topic sometimes uh what when you think back over the one word camp that you've been to <laughs> the massive well-rounded one word camp yes but you know what sometimes it's easier to answer this question when you've had one word camp experience than 35 word camp experiences when sure. you think back over your word camp experience <laughs> was there a pivotal moment for you like something that was really truly inspirational something that really has brought you to where you're like yes this is what i want to do and what was it yeah, it, it was really getting to do the hall, the hallway track and talking to people. Um, yes, I learned a great amount of information during the actual sessions and the speakers that they had were absolutely wonderful. But, uh, you know, I tried to learn the lingo ahead of time, try to figure out what I'm going into here. And I learned oh, this thing called hallway track. Okay, so that's where you just talk to people. Sweet, I can do, do that. Um, and being able to uh share my story of why i'm in wordpress uh why i have this as my second business um it's to to make a very long uh long story short uh my uh, son is almost three years years old um he was born prematurely and has a long list of uh problems and medical issues we're trying to work through and uh my day job as a as a bi biologist doesn't quite supply me with all of the money that i need uh to, take care of him properly. So I said, you know what, I've been building WordPress websites for people and the friends and family rate to basically free to almost free for mm -hmm. years. And I said, you know what, I need, I, I need to make this to a real business. I need to start charging people real money for my time, what I'm truly, truly worth. Uh, mm -hmm. And with my business of obsessive WP, it's named that because I'm crazy. And I make sure <laughs> that I go above and be beyond anyone's expectations for 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 their own site. So being able to meet people at the WordCamp that actually have similar family 
uh, stories about uh, you know how WordPress uh, by being how how having a WordPress business allows them to, to better take care of their own families uh, and being able to work from wherever and not have to be tied to some nine to two to five. That's what I really really liked. Um, mm -hmm. I was able to uh, talk to some uh, wonderful people. Uh, Adam Warner at mm -hmm. GoDaddy, WP yeah. WP Modder, um, uh, and uh, Jessica Frick at uh, at at Liquid Web. Uh, and uh, Sandy, who is the one that put on the whole word word camp. I mean, they were marvelous. And the fact that they sat down with this random stranger uh, mm -hmm. to talk about just family life and how WordPress has helped their own family life. Um, I look up to to them because I would love to be able to spend as much time with my son as, uh, you know, as they can with their own kids mm -hmm. and uh, have the freedom that WordPress offers them. And also, I totally got to fangirl out. Um, yes getting to meet uh, Chris Lemma and yeah. Ali, as we said, and uh, Nathan Ingram and uh, mm -hmm. David Bissett for the first time. That was yeah. really cool. Because again, people that I follow on Twitter and stuff, and I was sure. like, oh my God, you're really here. Like when I saw uh, Chris, uh, I was like, I've, I've read your blog for years. Like I've read all your membership stuff. Like I know everything, like I don't have the money to pay you to be my coach, but I've read everything that you have ever, ever said. He was like, hi, cool. We'll talk tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> <And stuff>. but, <laughs> then, <laughs> but, but then he was lovely and like talked, yeah. talked to me for just a long time about life and word WordPress. And I, that's why I really said that I wish I knew that this community existed previously sure. and my absolute favorite part of WordCamp or, or Orlando was this hallway track and getting to mm -hmm. meet people uh, and make a whole bunch of new WordPress friends. I love it and I'm guessing the Sandy you meant was Sandy Edwards. Yes, yes, and I'm not yes. say her, 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 her last name, yes. No, uh, Sandy I think and she's her, Sun Sand her, Design, uh, husband, I think Chris. is her, yeah. Yes, from uh, yeah. Data, Data Driven Labs, they're both wonderful, wonderful mm -hmm. people and yeah. um, Absolutely. Yeah. Chris and I met uh, at WordCamp Kent this year. We okay. were both speakers. He was a speaker. I was the keynote for that this year. And that was Ooh, pretty cool. Nice. And Sandy and I are both on the organizing team for WordCamp US this year. So yes, I, I saw really and, um, she's, she's doing a whole bunch of kid, kid camp things, which I think is yeah. wonderful. And when my son is uh, old e enough, I'm going to be dragging him along to WordCamps so he can attend the kid, kid camps too. That's fantastic. And I don't yeah. know if you're going to WordCamp US this year, but WordCamp US also has childcare for people this year. So that's pretty exciting too. I am trying to weasel away <laughs> to go into WordCamp US. Um, we'll see how. I, have, I, I, I have the desire and the time off, but it's a, it, it's a matter of con convincing other people to, uh, that it's fine for me to duck out for a long weekend, but we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Mrs. Chandler, Reiner, if you're listening. Yes. yes. <laughs> My wonderful wife, I love so much that I would bring her teacup on the podcast. <laughs> I completely understand. So you're, you're, you are one of those people that's like, my day job is this, but by night, I'm a WordPress superhero. So tell us yes. a little bit about your WordPress you know, Obsessive WP business now and how that's, um, you know, how you've rolled that out and how that's going for you. Yes. So uh, obs Obsessive WP, I try to focus on hosting, care plans, and then design in that order. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I have a business that, I, that is uh, sustainable for me as a secondary business, uh, because mm -hmm. currently that's how it has to actually be. Um, so by having uh, incredible hosting and care plans, those are things that I, I can take care of either through automated tools or my uh, 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. business <laughs> WordPress time, which is the, the amount of time I have in my day carved out just for obsessive WP stuff. Yeah. Um, and then uh, with WordPress these, these design being the third thing that I then actually offer, um, I have been a crazy techie for my entire life. And um, I always want to know how things work. That's why I am a a bi biologist by day is I love science um, and a techie and WordPress dude by 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 night. Um, and I basically realized that I was uh, learning all of these new tech technologies like static site generators and WordPress CLI and uh, all of these things for me just because I mm -hmm. wanted to learn them. 
And then I realized, wait a minute, wait a minute. How, how about I start char stop charging these friends and family rate for people and instead obsess over someone else's sites the same way that I do my own. <laughs> I love um, it. <laughs> so even though my website says that I take three backups per, per day, I take six. I take six backups per day of every one site and they're stored in different, different like <laughs> ways. Um, I have. I would Git. qualify that as obsessive, yes. <laughs> yes, well, you know why? Because one time I lost data and I will never have that happen to me ever I again. Yeah. And it's not just six backups, it's six backups using six different ways of taking backups. It's, I have my, my, my own uh, backup server that things will actually SSH to and then back up to that whole server too. So <laughs> I go above and beyond as mm -hmm. the default because I want to learn how all these tech technologies work. I'm a crazy techie and I want to uh, be able to share what I've learned to people that don't that, that just want things to work and they make sure that they go with someone that's crazy like me because they know that I'll obsess over it as much as they would and it's going to always work. Um, exactly. not, not to have this be a giant self plug for my own <laughs> business. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's what we, we, we do is hosting, care plans, design uh, to the best that we possibly can. I love it. <laughs> that's awesome. We, um, Often, I think in, in the WordPress community, people will ask what we do. And mm -hmm. if you're like me, you start to say, well, have you heard of WordPress? Because I, I work for a plugin company, right? Have you yes. heard of WordPress? You yes, I've heard of WordPress. <laughs> and then I say things uh -huh. like, um, well, WordPress runs on things like themes and plugins. And plugins add extra functionality. And that's when I start to see people's eyes glaze over. So now... Yeah. I say to people, I'm the head of customer success for a small software company. <laughs> That, and if they that, want, that works. If they want to know more, they ask. If not, then that's enough of an, <laughs> enough information, and I don't have to watch myself for them. So that's a good thing. <laughs> yep, that that works perfectly. <laughs> for sure. Well, let me ask you my rapid fire questions, which aren't really rapid, but let me ask them anyway. Okay. And move into them. And so the first question is: What are two or three must-have plugins that you would recommend to someone who's building their own website? So I broke this down into okay. two or three plugins, depending on how skilled of a WordPress user you are. Um, you are, there a, are a lot of <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I have to have hypotheses and testing for everything. And I wanted to have a list of plugins that are for people that are like me when they very first started out, where, mm -hmm. again, they, there's a cPanel soft, delicious one-click thing. Oh, cool. Let's go figure this, this, this out, right? Those people need very specific plugins. Um, first, back up everything, um, mm -hmm. either with uh, Updraft Plus, Backup Buddy, choose a backup plugin and stick to it. But most importantly, make sure that the backups are going off-site. Uh, a lot of people will install a backup plugin and save things locally, and then that's just like having no copies at all. So spend a dollar a year to get an S3 bucket to put all <laughs> your WordPress files in yeah. there, it's going to cost you basically nothing, and have things backed up. Um, a sub part to that: a lot of people forget to also back up their backup settings. So, for example, if you are using something like Updraft Plus, you can export your backup settings, so that way your S3 buckets and your keys and all that stuff will be backed up too. Because otherwise, if you reinstall the site and reinstall your backup plugin, and you just say, uh, oh, how do I restore? Mm. <laughs> so obviously make sure that your site is backed up right. as well as you have all of your keys backed up mm -hmm. so you can actually re restore. Um, and then for the WordPress noobs, you're gonna need to have your site se secured. Um, use the Kismet, it's free, it's, with, it's there. Um, and something like Word, WordFence to make sure that your password of, you know, super secret password one, two, three, isn't going to be <laughs> hacked when everybody starts banging at the WordPress login screen trying to figure that, that, that one out. Mm -hmm. um, and then third is email in WordPress is hard. Um, and if you're going to be spending your dollar a year for an F3 bucket to back things things up, you should at least be using a free tier of an email, uh, uh, you know, company like uh, SendGrid, SendInBlue, something. All all of them have their own WordPress plugins. 
find one, use their free tier. It's like 500 emails per month. If you are going beyond that, then you're not a WordPress noob. But if right. you use that that way, you can make sure that your recovery e emails, as well as all your WordFence emails, get to, to you. Good so point. that's like if you're a WordPress noob. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I have a second list of your WordPress dev more involved okay. in things. Um, so uh, audit logs. Audit logs are your friends, especially when you have clients that tell you that uh, you broke their site and you can turn the audit log back and then they'll say, actually it was you who broke your own site. Here's the proof. Um, so, but I can fix it, right? <laughs> yes, for an hourly charge because you went outside of your, your whole scope of, of, of things. So um, I use a, a, a plugin called the WP Security Audit Log. Uh, there's mm -hmm. also Simple History. Um, just use something to give you some sort of audit log. Nice. Um, I have had uh, WP Migrate DB Pro save my backside more times than I would like to ad admit to. The, de the uh, Delicious Brains folks are wonderful. All their plugins are great. And if you ever need to migrate Word WordPress and do it properly, uh, WP Migrate DB, definitely. Uh, and the third thing for more WordPress pros is make sure that you set up some sort of caching and a CDN. Um, there are really free, uh, sorry, there are really cheap to almost free CDNs out there. And that's not just cloud, cloud, cloud flare, like real actual mm -hmm. CDNs. Um, so set up a decent cache, like a uh, key CDN has a good cache. Um, auto, auto topomize. I can never pronounce that plugin <laughs> properly. Auto, um, auto, auto optimize. Auto, auto, auto optimize. Auto optimize. That's it. I sh probably should be <laughs> double fisting some more just so my <laughs> words come out of my mouth properly. <laughs> I love it. Um, and, uh, and a real CDN, uh, you know, plugin word, WordPress is obviously phenomenal, but the, the kind of downside to it is because everything is uh, drawn as visitors view your, your, your page and you are hopefully having a very high traffic site, you need to do what, what you can to speed things, things up. And there's very mm -hmm. simple uh, caching and uh, CSS minif minification and uh, CDN plugins that will help you speed those things up. That's so that was my six part answer to your uh, <laughs> two to three, uh, uh, two to three plugin question. Like, I love it. That's yeah. awesome. At any point in your WordPress journey, have you had a official or unofficial mentor and who was it? Not truly. Uh, as I said, I've, I've been basically self taught through all of my WordPress world. So it's hard for me to pin down a specific uh, person. Um, I have read as many blog articles as, as I could, watch as many YouTube videos as I could, broken as many sites as I could, um, <laughs> just to learn by ex experience. And I really wish that I had um, gotten into the WordPress com community side a bit more, so I would have had a good mentor to help um, guide me through this space. But uh, mm -hmm. I, I've, I've been pretty self-taught through, through this. That's awesome. I love it. Well, is there somebody that you admire in the WordPress community and who is it? Yes. So um, besides being able to fangirl over meeting like Chris Lemma in person, which I which <laughs> I've just, yeah. Um, I get it. yeah. <laughs> um, there is uh, someone who has a business that is um, similar to, to mine that I aspire to be like, uh, his name is Austin uh, Jin, Jinder. I believe I'm saying his last name right. Uh, he is part of the WordCamp uh, Lancaster PA area. Okay. Uh, he has um, a uh, WordPress hosting and maintenance maintenance company uh, called uh, called Anchor Host, Anchor Host. And I really want to be able to structure my WordPress business uh, similar to his, where the recurring revenue is enough to keep uh, a decent living wage and sure. um, the amount of work required to design a client site. Uh, doesn't need to be factored into things because you're really getting most of your money and uh, you know uh, time and experience is, is spent in the hosting and maintenance and care plan side of things, mm -hmm. which is what I would really really like. Um, I also like that he is radically transparent about everything. His business fin finances are public, um, and uh, I just aspire to be similar to him and being able to travel and support my own family. Uh, and I think what he's doing at, at Anchor Host is really great. That's awesome.
Yeah. Uh, what's something that you'd like to learn in WordPress, but you haven't tackled yet? So I have been slow to the Gutenberg slash block editor train, mm -hmm. um, resisting it for a long time uh, <laughs> because I've built sites using uh, Beaver Builder and Divi and Ele 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 Elementor. So I looked at that, I was like, okay, I, I, I got blocks. I'll keep using these blocks. I, I like these blocks. I'm gonna take these blocks, I'm gonna play with these blocks. <laughs> but I have not yet um, been able to really sit down and learn truly Gutenberg and built in a mm -hmm. block editor. So that's something I would, would like to learn more yeah. of. And uh, accessibility too. Um, being that I was really outside of you know the WordPress com community until rather recently, I didn't even realize that it, ex accessibility was a large topic that it truly is. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the sites that I have designed for clients in the past have not had accessibility as, as a, a first, first and foremost mindset. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm looking to really change that. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's something I'm, I'm bringing into uh, new clients and I hope to be able to fix for some of my older clients too. I always say it's a lot easier to design with accessibility in mind than to go back and retrofit. <sighs> I'm realizing that, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But it's good that you've joined the you've joined the discussion now, and that's a good thing for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 trying to. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I mean it's it's a journey for all of us, for sure. It is. Um what's one of the biggest WordPress mistakes you've ever made and what did you learn from it? Well, um I'm sure I, like most people, have the obligatory um I updated WordPress and now it broke story um yeah. like everyone does so mm -hmm. um that is what i was talking about in the past where i lost data once i will never lose data again <laughs> so backup backup backups right. um it was a relatively small client site so nothing was really you know nothing truly major like happened but yeah. just the fact that when i refresh the page and all i see are php errors and nothing works my heart sinks and i'm like yeah. oh god what did i i do and then of course the <laughs> backup doesn't work so um my biggest mistake is basically cowboy coding and trusting that this wonderful tech technology that I'm using is going to work every single time. It's not. You need to prepare for the, <laughs> the, the worst and plan for it. Um, also, I, um, because I'm all self-taught self for the most part, I didn't really know that child themes were a thing when I was first mm -hmm. uh, starting out. So, you know, I would install a theme and then like literally change the PHP of that theme to try oh. and uh, change, you know, the front end content. Yeah. And then I couldn't figure out why every time the theme updated all my stuff went <laughs> And I had to spend all this time doing it all over again. I was like, this is terrible. How, how come every time I click update and then you get stuck in the thing of not updating and then that, no. What a no. terrible design flaw. <laughs> I know it's a terrible. Every time you update, you have to start over. So I love it. Uh, That's great. Again, don't be like me and learn. Um, people have bashed their heads into the wall earlier. Um, so yeah. my biggest WordPress mis mis mistakes were not backing things things up and literally redoing like front end PHP every single time and like front end CSS every single time a theme up updated. So, so I'm glad yeah. I'm glad you've learned since then. Yes. Oh yes. I've learned a no, lot since, since No more since no then. more head shaped holes in the wall from banging your head there. No, no. At least not for word WordPress reasons. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> What's your proudest WordPress moment? My proudest WordPress moment was getting my first paycheck for mm -hmm building someone's site. Um, so the first time I ever got paid for a WordPress site was uh, designing a site for the florist that we used at my wife and, and my wedding. Um, uh -huh. We got a discount um, off of all of the uh, flowers because she needed a new site. So we worked out something and it was at that point that I really realized that, you know, people are willing to pay for mm -hmm. good quality work. My this is good quality work that was in the past and her site has been updated in, in, in a while and it needs a fresh coat of paint. So I've hesitated to say the name of the site on, <laughs> the, on the podcast, but, um, but uh, just the, the, the fact that, 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 that moment of going from hobbyist to pro felt mm -hmm. really good. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, I'm still trying to figure out good pricing and pricing my work. Cause I'm sure all of us are because pricing is a nightmare and a headache that no one mm -hmm. seems to have a, true definitive answer on um, Agreed. <laughs> but uh just being able to get paid for the first real client site was a phenomenal ex experience 
Yeah. If you weren't working in the industries that you're working in, so I'm going to take biology out of it as well as. Oh. I'm throwing I wasn't you a prepared curve, for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's a tertiary career hmm. that you would like to consider? <laughs> Well, can I cheat and say my first answer? Just because that was the one I pre, pre prepared of for. Of course, uh, go of course. <laughs> uh, Bioinformatics or computational biology, which uh -huh. is basically the love of my two worlds of uh, physical sciences and coding and tech world mm -hmm. and merging them. Uh, so computational bi biology is applying uh, uh, computer science methods to big, big biology data sets. So things mm -hmm. like whole genome sequencing um that's something i would love to do one day that sounds pretty um, cool actually yeah and it's it's a major problem because with all of um the new biological methods coming on online and more and more of people doing 23andme and getting things sequenced it, we mm -hmm. need to basically make sense out of noise and right. all if all that that you take is your strings of a p c's and g's which are the four building blocks that make up you um you need to make some sense out of out of that so it's basically applying like the same big data processing that uh, Facebook and Twitter and YouTube use to try and feed you ads and content and instead saying okay how do we make sense out of these four random letters and create something from this so right that would be my major thing uh, but besides that oh besides mixing biology and tech world um, well, I mean I won't, I won't push you if you want, if you want <laughs> that to be your answer that's fine I'll tell I mean, you I, Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, those, those have basically been my two passions uh, growing up. That's I wanted awesome. to go to like medical school for the longest time. Uh -huh. um, but genetics or um, computational bi bi biology, that kind of mm -hmm. field is where I would see myself next, to That's be pretty honest. Cool. Yeah. So my brother did the DNA test through um, genealogy.com. Okay. Okay. Yes, okay. And so that I didn't have to because we have the same parents. <laughs> So we should sure. have the uh -huh. same genetic background, right? Similar, so similar, yes. Uh -huh. Right. I mean, it's not like he's suddenly going to be like fifty percent German and I'm not, is what I mean, right? Oh no, you're <laughs> yeah. yes, correct. You're <laughs> so, you know, those like ethnic backgrounds would be the same yes, markers, yeah. Right, exactly. But but what was interesting is so on my mom's side we're supposedly Swedish and German, and on my dad's okay. side, French. And so the results come back and we're not Swedish, we're not German, and we're not French. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, uh -huh. that, that, that just means genetically that we don't have that, those markers. It doesn't mean that our families didn't grow up there and come from those That's places correct. and migrate right. through them. Right. So I still am German heritage and Swedish heritage okay. and French heritage. It's just that mm -hmm. I'm a heck of a lot more Irish than I ever thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. I have, I have not gone through those, those tests yet. I would really, really love, love to. Yeah. Um, but my, uh, we kind of joke and say that my, my mom's side of the family is the mutt. They're just a bit of every, yeah. everything, every culture you can possibly, possibly think of. Um, so if, if I was to go through that test, I'd probably be like 1% every, everything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I think most Americans probably have a lot of smatterings of other things. Um, yeah. in them as well things that might be surprising um what's something on your bucket list so i would love to travel more uh japan okay. is the number one oh, nice. place to travel to on my bucket list um in addition to all this that i do i'm a crazy uh, miles and points guy so mm -hmm. i I've, i like to figure out ways that i can travel for almost nothing uh nice. my wife and 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 i had a three-week italy honey honeymoon for that much money uh, because I planned nice. for a year to figure out uh, credit cards, sign up for, and points pro 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 programs. <laughs> I love it. So, so I'd love to travel more, and Japan is definitely on my bucket list. And um, another bucket list goal uh, on the biology side of things is I'd love to finally be uh, published in a peer re reviewed journal. I got this close one time, and then just mm -hmm. kind of fell fell through. So, um, I'd love to be able to not just be a WordPress pro, but like, a, yeah a biologist pro too and like have like no no i've i've published this like i i got i'm actually the expert here and you're not so sh <laughs> but yeah <laughs> i always say the expert is in in the room is the one who knows more so you know in any yeah. in most wordpress circles you would still be the biology expert so there you go <laughs> that's totally fine i'm fine with, with, with that, yeah. uh show us or tell us about a hidden talent that people in the wordpress community might not know about 
Ah, well, um, when I was really young, I learned ASL from a deaf kid named Brian. B, excuse me, B-R-I-A-N, there we go. Um, uh -huh. So I have been practicing AS, ASL ever, ever since. Uh, in high school, I took up a like ASL signing uh, class, and um, I use that as my foreign my foreign language. It's oh, helped me yeah. at random times. Um, mm -hmm. I've been at Target, and I ask a person that is stocking the shelves where things are, and he says I'm deaf. I was like, okay, so like, where is the uh, colored paper? He's like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know ASL? So um, I used to work at my college bookstores and uh, oh, there nice. was this one girl that would uh, write down notes and have to slide it back and forth because she was trying to find books and you couldn't find where things were. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, ASL and my, uh, my limited knowledge of American sign language is something that most people don't quite know. That's very cool. Yeah, I um, took a class when I was working at U of R University of Rochester. We have a huge deaf population um, in Rochester because the NTID is here. Um, okay. So it's as far as universities and colleges go, it's second only to Gallaudet as far as yes. the deaf population. Gallaudet, Gallaudet Uni, Uni, University is phenomenal. In fact, I've, yeah. I have, I've been there. Um, oh, cool. it's, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful school. Um, Anyway, sorry, sorry, go on. No, sorry that's okay. You. So, so you, if you've known deaf people, you probably have a name sign. Do, do you have a name sign that was assigned to you? I don't yet you have person? a name sign. No. You don't? I, don't. I do. No, no I, one, you do? I'm jealous. I, I okay, do. what is yeah. yours? So my name sign is an M, of course, but then right next to your mouth, because I smile all okay. the time, they said. So this is Michelle. That is beautiful. Isn't that cool? So, I like yeah, that. I, very nice. I, 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 I finger spell very slowly. <laughs> I read finger spelling very slowly, but I'm, uh -huh. but I, I know enough to help and to get by, which is very cool. Yeah, so, that, and, that is great. And, it, and no one quite um, rea realizes how uh, important ASL can really be. I mean, to go back and talking about ex ex accessibility, um, yeah. you know, you need to, uh, you need to make sure that the entire world as much as we can, can use your site. Uh, yes. And I just kind of glossed over this with my knowledge of American Sign Language never applied to me for website stuff, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm, it's, it's, I love ASL. I think it's a beautiful, yep. beautiful, beautiful language and it is it a really foreign is. language. Don't let anyone, anyone else tell you it is not a foreign language because it is. It is, absolutely is. Yeah. Um, the last question I have is how do we find you online and on social media? I am a few different places. Okay. So uh, ChandlerWeiner.com for my own personal blog. Uh, it was a WordPress site for many years. It's a Jekyll blog now. So I don't know if that's going to like. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Nah, but, it's all good. <laughs> but uh, my, my WordPress business is Obsessive WP. Uh, I'm on Twitter at CDubs. That's C underscore D-U-B-B-S. It's an old uh, EDM techno DJ name of mine that I used to have okay. back in college. Nice. <laughs> and the name just kind of, kind of, kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm on Git, GitHub as CR Weiner. And um, if there uh, is anybody in the or Orlando area that wants to hang out and talk Word WordPress, find me on uh, Twitter and in the WordPress Orlando meetup. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being here with me today. It was great to get to know you. I've enjoyed getting to know you and we've had some good laughs and I actually learned quite a, bit, quite a few things and that's been exciting. So well, this has you. been wonderful. Michelle, you're awesome. Thank you so much for having me, me on. And uh, it's just a true honor to be on, on here with some other really big name people that you have, <laughs> have spoken with. So um, this was wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for being here and uh, we'll see everybody on the next episode. Right. Bye. Bye. WP Coffee Talk with Michelle Frechette is a proud supporter of WP End Up, whose mission is to support and promote positive mental health within the WordPress community. Visit their website at wpendup.org.